Hello again, this is MTG Tournament Grinder. We're back with the semifinals of the standard PPTQ Top 8, and this time we've got Mono Red Aggro versus Red Black Aggro. Now these decks share about 80% of their cards, but let's go ahead and start with the Mono Red version. In the one drop slot, we've got Bomat Courier and Soul Scar Mage. Bomat Courier is strong because he has haste and can get in for damage right away. He also has whenever Bomat Courier attacks, exile the top card of your library face down. Then you may pay red, discard your hand, and sacrifice Bomat Courier to put all cards exiled this way into their owner's hands. So it's likely Bomat Courier would get in for 2 or 3 points of damage, have 2 or 3 cards under him, and you either get to draw those cards just as you're running out of gas, or your opponent has to waste the removal spell on a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. Now, for Soulscar Mage, it's a 1 mana 1-2 one, with prowess. If a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a creature an opponent controls, put that many minus 1 minus 1 counters on that creature instead. And this will make your lightning strikes, shocks, and abrades more impactful throughout the course of the game. Now, in the 2-drop slot, we've got Earthshaker Kinra and Karizev Skyship Raider. Earth Shaker Kenra is another hasty creature, a 2 mana 2 1, that says whenever he enters the battlefield, target creature with power equal to or less than Earth Shaker Kenra's power cannot block this turn. So that can help you get in for some early damage. And much later in the game, he has a 6 mana activated ability to eternalize him, bringing him back as a 4 4 black zombie jackal warrior. And with this deck CMC capping out at 4 mana, still having something to do when you have an empty hand late in the game can really make the difference. Also in the 2 drop slot is Karizev Skyship Raider. It's a 2 mana 1 3, first strike and menace so First Strike makes it a really great blocker. And it attacks well too, not only because of Menace, but because it says, whenever Skyship Raider attacks, create a legendary 2-1 red monkey creature token named Ragavan that's tapped and attacking. Exile that token at the end of combat. So, an aggressive creature that's right at home in this aggressive deck. Now for the 3-drop slot, we've got Oncrop Crasher and Goblin Chain Whirler. Oncrop Crasher is a 3-2 hasty creature with Exert, target creature cannot block this turn, so that's not unlike Earthshaker Kinra's ETB trigger. Now probably the most powerful card in the deck, Goblin Chain Whirler. 3 mana, 3-3 three, three with first strike. When Goblin Chain Whirler enters the battlefield, it deals 1 damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. And all that damage from Goblin Chain Whirler counts as non-combat damage. So if you've already played a Soul Scar Mage when Goblin Chain Whirler enters the battlefield, all that damage is distributed in the form of minus 1 minus 1 counters instead. And last but certainly not least is our 4-drop slot, containing Hazaret the Fervent and Rekindling Phoenix. Now, Hazaret the Fervent is good for a lot of reasons. The haste, the indestructible, all good. But I feel like his big biggest upside is his activated ability. 2 in a red, discard a card, Hazaret deals 2 damage to each opponent. So late in the game when both players are top decking, every bad card you top deck is now essentially a shock, thanks to Hazaret's ability. And for our last creature of the main board, Rekindling Phoenix. A 4 mana 4-3 four, flyer that requires being exiled if you want it to go away for good. Not because it has indestructible like Hazaret the Fervent, but because it reads, when Rekindling Phoenix dies, create a 0-1 red elemental creature token with, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this creature and return card named Rekindling Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. So Rekindling Phoenix is a 4 mana, 4 power flyer that can end the game pretty quickly and is hard to block. And the fact that it dodges non-exiling removal spells makes it one of the best threats in this deck. And that wraps it up for the main board. For what is basically the mirror match, Mono Red versus Red Black, sideboard wise I think they want to bring in Chandra's Defeat because it's in the sideboard specifically to go against red decks. It reads, it deals 5 damage to target red creature or red planeswalker. If that permanent is a Chandra planeswalker you may discard a card. If you do draw a card. So it's definitely coming in when both decks have Chandra's and are almost completely red. I also think Glorybringer would be a good card to bring in. 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, flying haste, you may exert it as it attacks. If you do, it deals 4 damage to target non-dragon creature an opponent controls. So when what is basically the mirror match, that can kill any creature in your opponent's deck, except of course Hazaret, because it's indestructible. And there might be more, but without playing the deck personally, the last good card I see to bring in here is Aether Sphere Harvester, because it's got lifelink. So when the mono red versus red black matchup, the first player to start gaining life is most likely going to win. And I think that about wraps it up for the mono red. Now for the red black deck, it is so similar to the mono Mono Red that I'm only going to cover the cards that are different. So the only creature that's in the Red Black deck that is not in the Mono Red version is Scrap Heap Scrounger. It's a 2 mana 3 2 that can't block, and for one in a black, you can exile another creature card from your graveyard to return Scrap Heap Scrounger from your graveyard to the battlefield. If it could block, this card would be insane, but being able to bring back 3 power from the graveyard is still good. Good enough, in fact, that this deck runs Magma Spray in preparation for their opponent's Scrap Heap Scroungers. Magma Spray is relevant here because it deals 2 damage to target creature, and if that creature would die this turn, 
turn, exile it instead. So Magma Spray is here to replace Shock, and Unlicensed Disintegration is here to replace Lightning Strike. It costs one black, one red, and one colorless, and it says, destroy target creature. If you control an artifact, Unlicensed Disintegration deals three damage to that creature's controller. So I don't think this deck would play Unlicensed Disintegration without Scrap Heap Scrounger, and vice versa. I doubt it would play Scrap Heap Scrounger if it didn't get the payoff from Unlicensed Disintegration. So definitely some good synergy on that point. And besides the change in the mana base to accommodate the black spells, I believe that the rest of the main board is pretty much the same. As for the sideboard, there are a few different options that I think they would bring in. Of course, they also have Glorybringer and Chandra's Defeat, but they also have a few good black cards at their disposal, namely Hour of Glory and also Doomfall. So you're bringing in Hour of Glory because it says Exile Target Creature. If that creature was a god, its controller reveals his or her hand and exiles all cards from it with the same name as that creature. Against the deck with a playset of gods, you're definitely bringing this in, but it's also a good answer for Rekindling Phoenix, preventing it from coming back at every upkeep. Now, Doomfall is good for kind of similar reasons. It has two modes. One, target opponent exiles a creature he or she controls, which could force your opponent to exile their own Hazaret or Rekindling Phoenix. And the second mode is Hand Disruption. Target opponent reveals his or her hand, you choose a non-land card from it and exile that card. So you can also handle a Hazaret or a Rekindling Phoenix before it ever touches the battlefield. And I think that about wraps this up, so let's go ahead and jump into game one of the semi-finals.
Sure. Seven in here, nine. Okay. 
first color things. For sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'll take it. So, a down a one? Yeah. After combat, two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> 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 I was like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> I mean, you'd be surprised when you no, no, no. like that. Literally, like, literally, by like 